garage the other day getting a can of uh, red diesel for the old uh, Massey 35 on the place and uh, that's a pleasure, always is a joy and um, I met a guy in there who'd just come from the mart, he's a dealer, he had his lorry with him and uh, I said, how's it going, how are we getting on? He said, oh, it's been dry, it's been terrible. I said, yeah, we haven't been cut anything for ages. He said, oh, we had a bit, he said, but to be honest with you, he said, um, in one much there, I was totally ashamed of it, to be honest, it was something to be ashamed of. And I just stopped and I thought, this guy's not a technical grassland man. He's not one of those techno grazing type blokes. He's, he's just traditional really, and he, he deals cattle a bit. And there he is talking about his silage as if it's something to be ashamed of, such as the pride that he, he takes in the job, really, self-respect. And he was feeling ashamed about the, the, the small quantity of silage he'd had on his first cut. So look, we've got to be careful, right, what we take pride in and what we're ashamed of. And it's easy to be ashamed. We're, we're going through times of intense, I suppose, human experience at the moment with COVID and everything else. And we just, we just got to take care of, of not living under condemnation. You know, now we sometimes condemn our th ourselves for things that we should because we've done stuff we shouldn't have done. There's no doubt about that, no doubt at all. Um, and, and the thing to do then is put, put it right and put it right with God. You know, why do I say put it right with God? Um, for this reason, really, I may have wronged somebody else and I may need to go to them and I may to say, need to say sorry, right? That's that's fine. But if they start come condemning me, there's there's another thing that comes into play. There was a very famous story with Jesus when there was a lady that had been caught in adultery and uh, she'd been sleeping with somebody else's husband. And um, the, the, the problem there was that she was surrounded by very religious people who were condemning her. Now Jesus came into that situation they were watching him carefully to see what sort of answer he'd give to that woman, what he'd say. And uh, he just bent down and he started drawing in the dirt. And it looks like what he was doing was writing down each letter of the Hebrew alphabet that stood for one of the Ten Commandments. Because gradually, as they saw him do it, the people who were saying, accusing this woman and wanted to stone her, actually, it's pretty severe, they, they started drifting away. Jesus had said, whoever's without fault, let him be the one to cast the first stone. And then when they'd all drifted away, he got up and he spoke to the woman. And he said, is there nobody here to accuse you anymore? He'd reminded them all, you see, of the commandments that they themselves had broken just by drawing the letters for each of the Ten Commandments down in the dirt there. And uh, they'd realised where they stood and they'd, they'd given up and gone away because they realised that they too were people who had things that they should be sorry about and shouldn't have done. In the Bible, we meet a character called the Accuser of the Brethren. Satan is the Accuser of the Brethren and his job is to give people a bad conscience about things they really shouldn't, to have people living under condemnation. Now, in the New Testament, in Galatians 5, verse 1, it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Everybody thinks of Christianity as being a big old guilt manipulation machine to get you to do things you don't want to do. No, no, no. The whole point of it is to be set free and to live in freedom. Not free to do wrong, Jesus said to that woman. Go and leave your life of sin. You'll be happier anyway. But to leave it and then live free. And that's the big deal. We shouldn't be in a situation where we're condemning ourselves and doing, doing old Satan's work, right? We shouldn't be condemning ourselves like that because that ends up with us not living the way God intends for people to live free, but free in Christ. Because what Christ has done is paid the price of any sin we have committed and he's done enough to pay the price of any sin we have committed with God. It's not for me, like those Pharisees standing around that woman who committed adultery, to be condemning people that, well, I've sinned too. I'm, I'm, I'm like a, a person living in a glass house throwing stones if I'm not very careful. And, and that's, not, that's not the place to be. But to be forgiven by God, that's another matter. He's the one that's without sin, and to him we have to give an account. So, Paul is writing to the Galatian church, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Get to the gospel. Don't be burdened again by a yoke of slavery.